Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Kathleen Illustrated and Sophie Dow, my lovely guest. Welcome back to Adobe Live. It's a weekly show on Behance. This is what, the third stream of the day? Fourth? I don't know. Fourth, yep, there we go. <laughs> it's been a long and awesome day today. We are celebrating, and this whole week we're celebrating illustration and digital painting. My personal favorite things. I don't know about you, but I was pretty excited when I heard it was going to be an illustration week. Um, like I said, this is Sophie Dow. She's an amazing illustrator. You can see some of her work behind us a little bit. We'll look at more of it later. Um, for those of you guys tuning in for the first time, we're going to be running two kind of contests slash giveaways this stream, so stick around. But before I talk about that, let's take a peek at some of Sophie's work and let her introduce herself. Hi, Sophie. Hi everyone. Hi Kathleen. <laughs> Hello. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm very nervous. It's my first time live streaming, so Aww. please bear with me. They'll be um, kind. They're so nice. Don't even worry about it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, about me, I um, I currently work at Google. I work on Google Doodles full time. Awesome. Um, I've been there since 2013. Before that, I went to CalArts, California Institute of the Arts, for animation and um, got my BFA. And um, yeah, pretty much just a Bay Area girl, lived here since I was around nine. Cool. And LA for college briefly and back to San Francisco now for work. Nice. That's awesome. People are like, don't be, don't be nervous. Aww. We've seen your work, blah, blah, blah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So cool. They saw you on Video to Brain. Is that you? Were you on Video to Brain? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> not. So. Maybe another so Sophie. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for welcoming her so warmly. Let's take a peek at some of her work for those of you who have not seen it. So I don't know where you guys are watching from, but you should be watching from be.net slash live. That's the best way to watch is on Behance. Um, that way you can click on anybody's name and go to straight to their Behance portfolio. We're looking at Sophie's right now. It's a great way to find friends, appreciate artwork, get inspiration. Sophie, which one do you want to look at? Which one do you want to talk about? Um, hmm. Oh, thank you. Um, we can start from the beginning or like All the, right. yeah. So, so cute. I just, despite looking at Behance a lot for portfolio review and, um, looking for freelancers and stuff. I never actually made a Behance until this. Oh. So I was just filling it in over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And um, this one is an illustration I did a couple years ago now um, based on a trip I um, did to Thailand. Nice. And a river, river boat ride through um, the Chao Praya River. I think oh, I'm wow. saying it right. Mm -hmm. I love those colors on that roof. Oh, those cool. blues are like startling in a good way. <laughs> love it. And then, is this kind of what you're maybe thinking about working on today? One of these little um, creatures? Yeah, I was thinking I could do something based off of this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, so Tiny Troubles is like a little, it's a name for kind of a series I've been working so on cute. for um, for a, a year, a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. um, it's about two succulent friends and more potentially who are kind of... Um, they have little existential crises, but it's okay because it all works out in the end. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's about kind of like friendship and, you know, drinking enough water and supporting each other and all that good stuff. Wow. I love how worried they look, <laughs> but how chill the other one always is. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. <laughs> wow. So what was the inspiration behind this? Your own existential crisis? Um, yeah, I would have oh. to say that... <laughs> Um, I don't know if probably a lot of people can relate, but there's, um, you know, a lot of moments in life where you're like, what is this? Why am I here? You know, yeah. what? I don't understand what anything is. And, um, it was kind of helpful to channel this through these kind of small, cute characters. Yeah, who, totally. You know, if you saw this character being like, oh, I'm so worried, you'd be like, don't worry, it's yeah, fine. You know? You're fine. And you're so cute. It's kind of like a good metaphor for yourself you Definitely. should say that to yourself as well yeah <laughs> sleepy computer we're good now this is like a really extensive project too um yeah it's kind of on hiatus i haven't really ah. done anything new in the last year except for make the cover 
and um, make the pattern because mm -hmm. I was putting it together for a zine that I'm ah. gonna sell at CTN next weekend. But nice. um, yeah, it's a it's something I'd like to pick up again soon. Very cool. And is it in chronological order? Like, are the ones um, close to the top the oldest ones? Not necessarily. Ah. It's kind of in the order of like what makes sense to read together mm -hmm. in sequence. Yeah. Wow. I am inspired to draw some cute little plant people. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. Very awesome. So it goes from like some sort of kind of children's book, illustration-y, existential crises, cute plant, to these gorgeous landscapes. Would you say that's kind of your specialty? Or something um, you really love to do? Yeah, it's definitely my favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's um, kind of... Uh, it's it's like fan art of the earth. And <laughs> I love yeah, that. <laughs> we, you know, I probably read that somewhere and stole it, but it's that's right. very. Um, <laughs> it's like a very like nice way to appreciate the planet that we live on. I think, mm -hmm. um, and also to kind of record my memories of taking hikes and traveling around. Yeah. So all of these are from places you've actually been. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, the top one here is mm -hmm. from my bedroom window. No way. Yeah. Wow. Well, there's more buildings in the front, but I kind of yeah. did some artistic you license. Edited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So you're, you said you're a Bay Area girl. Mm -hmm. Have you found a lot of inspiration from this wild and lovely place that is the Bay Area? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. San Francisco in particular is a very beautiful city, mm -hmm. very aesthetically pleasing, and um, the hills and the yes. lights just make it really picturesque. Definitely. Wow, yeah, everybody is freaking out. They're wondering what program you create most of your work in, like the ones that we've seen so far. Um, I make everything in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. It's my one and only. Yeah, same. Have you ever dabbled in Illustrator or um, not so much? Very briefly and usually against my will. <laughs> same, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yep. I feel like you get these jobs sometimes and they're like, we need a vector image. And I'm like, do you though? <laughs> <laughs> Can it not be? <laughs> That's awesome. So nice to see your portfolio. And maybe this gives us kind of a glimpse into what you'll be creating during the stream. But before we jump into that, I want to tell you guys about the giveaway and the contest that we're running. If you were in the previous stream, you probably saw that somebody won a Creative Cloud subscription and you can too. So at the end of the stream, we'll be picking one lucky winner of the contest. So if you go to b.net slash live, that's be.net slash live, and click on the contest tab, you will see this lovely information. Um, the theme of today is bike, Bikes, and we want you to use Photoshop and Illustrator 2018, import an actual photograph of a bike, and then kind of form an illustration around it. Um, once you're done with that, you have until, let's see, almost the end of two hours, so 4.45 um, Pacific time, to submit your work, and we'll have Sophie pick the winner. That's a lot of pressure, but you're going to do great. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we'll take a <laughs> peek at them as they come rolling in. Um, kind of give our two cents, or Sophie will give her two cents, and we'll pick a winner. And then in the middle of the segment, so in about 50 minutes, we're going to pick a giveaway winner, and that lucky winner is going to win three posters that were created live here by illustrators on Adobe Live. So there's one by Rob Zillow, one by Jing Wei, and one by Christine Heron. You will win all of them. All you have to do is be watching us from be.net slash live. All right. You ready to draw? Some stuff yeah awesome um, cool and before you even start Shelly wants to know why do most artists not like illustrator um I can't speak for other artists but for myself it's probably because um I started drawing on paper and and pencil or yeah. paper and crayon when mm -hmm. I was a little kid and I think photoshop allows me to recreate that kind of organic feeling mm -hmm. um and vector art is super versatile and super amazing, but it's never something that allowed that like I got really into just because I always crave that like organic feeling. Yeah, right. I have a hard time being inspired in Illustrator. Like you can't just draw something. You have to like build a shape and decide all these factors that not too inspiring to me. But I totally get why it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are saying I love Illustrator. <laughs> not trying to fight. We're all Adobe here, it's all good. I think Photoshop is more like drawing and painting on physical media, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and it is definitely an intimidating piece of software, Illustrator, but Photoshop also is pretty intimidating, although it might be a little more intuitive, potentially. <laughs> cool, so you had an idea about how you wanted to build this illustration, and it was a little interactive, right? Um, yeah, I was wondering if, um, I was chatting with Kathleen yesterday over email, and I was wondering if you guys on the chat would be able to help me with this illustration a little bit, yeah. like give me some ideas, or um, talk about, you know, any objects you'd like me to put in, because um, it's it's a very new medium for me, live streaming, and why not use the audience? Heck yeah! So if you guys have any ideas, anything you want her to throw in the illustration, um, is there something specific that you like drawing a lot? Like, do you like fan art? Do you like dogs? Um, I love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I love all those things. <laughs> I really like to draw, or I guess I like reflections because you can do one painting and then you can mirror it and then you get like a really deep, like, oh, whoa. Oh, so much so, work went into this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know. That's kind of why I really like to paint water. Mm. So maybe some water will appear in this illustration? Yeah. Perchance? A sprinkled mm -hmm. donut, somebody <laughs> says. That's a okay. good idea. Oh, somebody says winter wonderland, snow. I hear it's snowing in some places in the States. That's kind of crazy. Mm. Man, coffee. An iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. A reflection of a dog <laughs> in the nighttime. Your little succulent people going to see a wise old cigar saguaro? Saguaro? Saguaro cactus. <laughs> I'm a Midwesterner. I don't know how to pronounce cactus names. How Animals? about a bike? Oh. Mm, that's for you guys. You're, you're <laughs> the people in the contest. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Drawing modes of air transportation is very difficult. Are you inspired by any of these things? Um... Mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> animals in a lake. I like animals. Yeah. A newly discovered planet's cave with new plant life and other small creatures. Ooh. That sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I might run with that one. Yeah. Um, I like small creatures mm -hmm. a lot, as you can probably tell. And nature. Very cool. Stranger Things poster. Mm. <laughs> Make a whole poster in one and a okay. half hours. Cool. Well, Very cool. Um, how about I start with a character and then we can... Um, I'll, I'll do like a character in a cave and then we can like fill in yeah. the objects from there. Very cool. Um, I think I saw a question earlier where someone was like, what size canvas do you start with? Ah. Um, I like to start with 13 by 19 inches. Hmm. That's like a pretty standard print size. Yeah. Or, um, it's like a the biggest print, sh the biggest size print that like most um, medium professional printers can do mm -hmm. so I think it's good to just like do that in case you ever want to print your work and um, you can size it down from there yeah there you go it's like you don't need to work in vector if you want to make large artwork you just gotta make those photoshop files <laughs> real big and sometimes your computer dies it's okay uh, uh. <laughs> people are like so you don't like my idea you're not Aww. gonna go with it <laughs> that's okay Cool, so we're gonna okay. go with some sort of mountain, cave, small creature. Okay. Very cool. And if you guys have any questions for Sophie, she's gonna be here for the next about two hours, close to it. Um, but she'll also be here for the next two days. And we'll have everybody else who has streamed for the rest of the day again on Wednesday and Thursday. And we'll also have two other contests on Wednesday and Thursday. So today the theme is bikes. Tomorrow, it's a mystery theme. We don't know what it is yet because we don't want you guys to start ahead of time. And then Thursday will be another mystery theme. Very cool. Ahmed wants to know, how do you get inspired for your work? I know you mentioned nature is inspiring to you. Um, yeah, so nature is the biggest one, I would say. Um, walking around, seeing the way um, people interact on the street or like you know mm. just kind of like observing what happens around you I think is super inspiring to me um, I really like when I was a kid I used to really like drawing from books oh. so um, like I think that will always be my first love is like drawing from literary stories and um, trying to imagine what they would look like if they were if they were characters or people yeah um, 
Um, I used to be really inspired by music, but lately haven't really been listening to that much mm. music, and so I'd mm-hmm. like to start back that back up again. Yeah, like what kind of music are you inspired by? Um, I my favorite band is Beach House, oh, and nice. I really like their kind of ethereal, like otherworldly sound, mm-hmm. and that's something that you know in, at their concerts they have a lot of like ambient light and yeah. really cool. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, cool installations and stuff, and so that's something that I think is really, really inspiring visually. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. just gonna say, looking at your work, I was looking at this like Northern Lights Aurora Borealis painting, and you said ethereal, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> totally. What's up, Nelson? If you guys are new to the chat or new to the stream, let us know. Say hello. We'd love to say hey. And like I said earlier, this is an awesome way to kind of build your community. Everybody that is chatting right now, uh, you can just click their name and go to their Behance portfolio and find some really surprisingly awesome uh, artists that you might have never found before. You can appreciate each other's work, gather some inspiration. Um, did you make a Selena doodle like a month ago? Uh, no, that was um, my coworkers Kevin Laughlin, Olivia Wynn, and Juliana Chen. Oh, yeah. so more than one person works on one doodle? Um, yeah, that one in particular was oh. like a long video. So oh, gotcha. Yeah. Nice. I didn't see it, but and, that yeah, sounds awesome. Video. It was really good. You should watch it. Nice. Um, except to Bitty Bitty Bum Bum. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. This sketch is so good. I need to practice. <laughs> yeah, it's like already coming through very clearly what what you're trying to evoke. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah says she just discovered the live stream today. Very cool. That's awesome. Sarah, stick around, please. Like I said at the beginning, this is a weekly show. Every week, Tuesday through Thursday, we're here. So why don't you be here too? It's actually a great thing to, at least for me, keep up on like maybe a second monitor or minimize and just listen to the audio while you're working on freelance or doing your thing. Really inspiring. And it feels like you're not working alone if you are working alone. (laughs) I like that a lot. I I watch a lot of live streams Mm -hmm. because I'm like, where are my friends? The Halloween doodle look like your style. Was that you? Asks Adam Fox. Um, that was my, the most recent one was um, my coworker Nate Swinehart. Um, but I helped on some of the backgrounds re- very minimally. I only did like five backgrounds, but it was it was um, really, really good. Like it's all Nate though. Oh, he did nice. all the storyboarding, the directing, everything. Wow, so it seems like these doodles are very involved. Even if it's just a flat illustration, is it so involved with so many different team members? Um, if it's a static illustration, it'll usually just be one person. Mm-hmm. Um, though we do like weekly art review to give feedback and stuff. For the bigger ones, it's um, nice to get other runners involved because it feels more like a collaboration. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of good to get those opportunities. Definitely. Caitlin says, you're adding these shapes that give texture and like eye candy to your layout. <laughs> How do you decide where to put these shapes and break up the space? Aw, hi Caitlin. Caitlin's one of my best friends. Aw, um, that's so nice. Uh, how do you decide where to put these shapes? Um, hmm. Like especially those I guess, squiggles. I guess it's kind of like, I try to make sure there's like interest in in each area that you look at. Mm-hmm. So, um, like for this area, I'm not sure. It's kind of just like a reaction. So this, mm. I started drawing these like rocks first, and then um, realized there's this like kind of shape here. And so I figured I could complement these rocks shapes by kind of adding these like um, ceiling squiggles yeah. and then having like these straight lines because um one of the main principles in design or like design for animation in particular is straights versus curves so like having a lot of curved shapes and then having some straight elements near it will kind of um make it feel like they're complementing each other mm-hmm. um same goes for like over here there's like this like short straight horizontal line for like the horizon or the edge of the water or something and then everything else around it is not horizontal Mm -hmm. so like this is vertical this is this kind of like a curved vertical these are all kind of going around it and like swooping around so it's kind of helpful to be like if you put a shape down you want to think of something that complements it and like lets it uh, stand out a little bit Mm -hmm. yeah that's so true 
and with that with those straight and the curves it kind of lets your eye dance around a little bit leads it around the image very nice so people are wondering are you tempted to hide letters in your illustrations do you ever put hidden messages in no. or little hidden <laughs> even like little <laughs> hidden drawings um, little critters no not really <laughs> nope. I I'm like a fan of simplicity, mm. so I don't. I try not to over decorate if I can get away with it. Mm -hmm. Partly because I'm lazy, and partly <laughs> because, like, I think, um, I like to have people get the whole feeling of the illustration if they look at it right away. Mm. And if there is detail, I don't want to like over rot that area mm. because. Um, it, especially if it's not the area I want them to focus on, right. it kind of like distracts them from the main, the main story or totally. the main thing of the illustration. Yeah, that's actually a sign of I think a strong designer or a strong artist is when they don't want to over decorate. I have the tendency to want to just add filigree and like detail to everything, and I know in my mind it's just my way of saying like, well, if I do this, it'll look good. <laughs> Where it's like maybe I should just design it a little better and it'll look good. Well, I think there's also like a really beautiful and designed way to make everything very decorated mm -hmm. yeah and I just haven't gotten to that point yet where I can do that so yeah but even these little kind of wavy rock forms like they influence the way that your eye moves around and the straights versus the curves but they're also kind of like a nice decorative little asset is this a default brush in Photoshop um no this brush is um I've acquired a bunch of my brushes through doing freelance over the years, oh. so this one is uh, back when I did some freelance on Steven Universe in school, mm. and I got some brushes from uh, the art director at the time, Kevin Dart, and nice. I think he made this brush. Yes. That's so, awesome. um, yeah, a bunch of my brushes are kind of like Frankenstein together from right. previous jobs. Definitely. Actually, when I saw your or when I heard that I was going to be hosting with you, I was like, oh, the Steven Universe girl. That one. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And I definitely see that kind of beautiful atmospheric color in your other pieces. That makes you kind of an intuitive choice to, were you doing background mm -hmm. kind of stuff? That's mm -hmm. awesome. If you guys have never watched Steven Universe, don't wait. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, Caesar wants to know, how far in advance of an event do you have to work on a doodle? Um, depends on the complexity of the doodle. Uh, for games, it's much, much longer, mm, obviously. Yeah. Some illustrations are um, a couple months, like two oh or three months. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I was expecting like a couple days. Um, no. <laughs> it, takes, it takes some time to make sure you like do justice to the subject totally. because yeah. each, usually it's like a person who's mm. deceased and... Yeah their family and you know people who knew them mm -hmm. you know that you want to do it right and um kind of like make sure you because you only get one chance to yeah. celebrate somebody mm -hmm. so, or at least for doodles so. yeah mm -hmm. that's so true i guess i was meaning more like since there are so many mm -hmm. doodles like how can you stay so far out ahead of them but i guess staying so far out ahead is a good way <laughs> because you can't just be making one every day that's crazy Crazy, and it seems like it's a pretty big team too that you have working over there. Yeah, we have um, a dozen illustrators, I think, mm -hmm. and ten engineers, um, and we have a bunch of really important, like marketing, production, and like um, everybody who makes them actually happen, and yeah. everyone else just like kind of like follows through on the rest of it. Gotcha. Yeah. A lot of cross-functional workflow happening. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And you've been there since 2013. So yeah. Do you know when kind of the Google Doodle started? Was it around that time or much uh, before was, then? It was like in the 90s. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it kind of exploded more recently than that. That's um, crazy. They started doing them... The first one was when Larry and Sergey, who mm -hmm. founded Google, Yeah. they we're gonna go to Burning Man for a week. So they put the Burning Man logo on the oh. doodle as like an out of office sign. Like, gotcha. if the site goes down, just don't worry, we're at Burning Man, we'll be back in a week. Right, yeah, yeah. And then it became kind of like this thing from there, this gotcha. tradition. Wow, mm -hmm. that's very cool. 
Um, Nelson wants to know, have you ever experimented with creating your own brush for your artwork? Um, yes, I definitely, uh, usually I create brushes for very specific purposes oh. rather than like for painting generally. Mm -hmm. um, if it's like, I want a brush that will look exactly like this shape or yeah. like an X or like a, you know, triangle or something, I'll mm -hmm. create it. But generally I think that like, um, my, in my work, I don't think the brush work, the brushes I use are like as important as other people's necessarily, right. just because I tend to do a lot of like big shapes of color mm -hmm. using like lasso tool or like texture. Right. And so, um, it, you know, just haven't really gotten to the point where I need to like make my own brushes. Right. Have you ever played around with Adobe Capture? No, what's that? It's like a mobile app. You can do use your iPad or Android device or your phone device. Um, and you can take a picture of something, you can draw something, and turn it into a brush from your phone mm, or your cool. tablet. Yeah. And then it'll automatically be synced with your libraries to use within <laughs> Photoshop. That's awesome. Yeah. I like to do, I'll do like a little, I don't know, scattered ditzy design and then turn it into kind of like digital washi tape or mm -hmm. like paper tape. It's a nice way to kind of visually journal, add borders and things. Um, yeah, Helen, tomorrow we're going to have a new theme for the contest, but this week's theme is, or not this week's, today's theme is bikes. And we have had so many awesome entries so far. I actually have a couple open on my screen right now. They're amazing. Uh, this is the information, so you will use Photoshop or Illustrator 2018 and then import an actual picture of a bike and kind of form an illustration around it. Uh, share the link in chat and then at the end of this segment, so in about an hour and 10 minutes, we will look at all the um, entries and Sophie's going to pick a winner. And that winner will win Creative Cloud subscription for a year. Amazing. You should definitely enter. Even if you're kind of like pussyfooting around it, like I'm not sure, maybe I'll enter. You should enter. <laughs> Why not? Nothing to lose. Oh, now there's a turtle. Yeah, that's great. I saw a turtle in the <laughs> chat. Yeah, I saw that too. Nice. So you're already implementing the chat ideas. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it sounds like a pretty cool contest. You're right, Nelson. You should enter. <laughs> <laughs> Aliza wants to know if you're drawing with a mouse. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm drawing with the Wacom Cintiq. Yeah, so this big kind of thing that's in front of her right now is basically a big thing that you draw right onto, like a big screen. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you use a Cintiq when you work usually, or do you usually use like a tablet or? Uh, I usually use a Cintiq. We have one at my desk at work, mm -hmm. so that's super helpful. Um, and I think that like using the Cintiq is kind of, it like made me feel like I was actually making something on the computer with my own hands. Me too, yes. Yeah, so it's a really cool feeling. Mm -hmm. it, there's this disconnect when you're drawing on a flat table on a tablet, but then looking forward at a computer screen, you're like, am I actually doing this? Don't understand, and it's never felt intuitive to me. Definitely takes time to kind of build that weird skill. Ahmed uses an Intuos Wacom tablet. Yep, me too, I use the uh, medium sized. It's a good one. Juliana says, hi, Sophie. Hi, Juliana. <laughs> nice. Who else we got in chat? Feel free to say hi. Also, we did this during the first segment. If you guys want to sound off what country you are chatting from, that would be great. We already have United States checked off the list. So what other crazy countries can we get? We had all kinds last time. We had like Colombia, Poland, craziness. Hi from Colombia. There you oh. go. USA, Malaysia, Egypt, San Diego. Oh my goodness. <laughs> awesome. Wait, so it's like really late over there or really early. Uh-huh. I'm very impressed. Yeah, Greece, Mexico, Scotland, Portugal, Seattle, Egypt again, uh, New York, Missouri, Netherlands. We are pretty crazy over here. <laughs> What's up, Cedric? Ocean City, Sweden. Cairo, oh my goodness. Wild, yeah, we had someone yes or not yesterday. I'm getting my days mixed up just a couple hours ago that was like, <laughs> it's 3 a.m. here. And I'm like, you should go to bed. <laughs> but thank you for hanging out. 
San Francisco. Oh, heck yeah, us too. Honolulu, nice. Chicago, cool. Such a multicultural yeah, and like so many. widespread community. Man, have you found that making art and posting it online has helped you create a community of people around the world? Um, it's definitely cool to see uh, how other artists in different countries, like, I think there's an intrinsic, like, stylistic flavor that people ah. get from, like, the culture they grew up in mm -hmm. or the mythologies of the countries they're living in yeah. and stuff like that. Definitely. So it's cool to see that. I could probably do a little bit more of like, like with them traveling, I could probably be a little bit more, you know, hey, I'm in here, let's meet up. But yeah. so far, I've been pretty shy. Aww. <laughs> well, that's all right. Mm -hmm. You're traveling, you're doing your thing, painting beautiful landscapes. And you do a lot of traveling, it seems. Mm -hmm. Is that a big passion of yours? Yeah, I um, recently got into it a few years ago, and mm. it's been really nice. Um, lucky that I get vacation days at work. Mm -hmm. I can kind of go. And also lucky to travel for work semi-frequently. Oh, nice. For what reasons? Just for inspiration? or um, Usually to like visit people in different Google offices or uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, that's fun. Uh, Rich, what is going? What are you doing with this drawing? You missed the beginning. So Sophie is being very brave, and she asked the chat for inspiration um, on what she should draw. So what was it? An another planet's cave it's with little creatures? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and someone said a turtle. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just formulating from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Caves, little critters. So what is the craziest place that you've traveled for work so far, um, or your most enjoyable place? The craziest place I traveled to for work was Rio, uh, oh. Rio and Sao Paulo mm -hmm. in 2014 for the World Cup. Oh, wow. Um, for the World Cup? That's why you went? Well, unfortunately, I didn't go to any World Cup games, Oh. but we, we were doing this thing where we were doing a doodle every day. Mm-hmm for each game of the World Cup, oh, and we are kind of doing it live, like mm -hmm. reacting to what was happening in the game, doing little animations with these letter characters, uh, and kind of just living in this war room for four weeks. Four weeks? Because <laughs> it was happening for about that long. Oh my goodness. Um, that was really fun, but I probably don't want to do that again. <laughs> no, you're like, once. But it was beautiful. Enough. I really liked Brazil. Um, I went to the Amazon for a week afterward just to kind of uh, decompress. Wow. And um, it's a beautiful place. Lots of mosquitoes. I've heard. Um, lots of crocodiles. Oh. And anacondas, but I didn't see one. Oh, good. But you saw all the other things? Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. We have, let's see, I think three, four, four contest entries that we can take a peek at. Very awesome, guys. You get these in quickly. So here's one titled Rainbow Girl. Wowza. Wow. Where's her head? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. I love the texture. And then we have... Oh, this is nice. I like the texture on this, too. There's like a little bit of a grain on the whole thing. Very cool. Ooh, perspective. Yeah, there you go. It's getting brave. <laughs> Nice, and this actually uses a photograph of a bike, which is cool. That's one of the uh, tenants of the contest. You get to actually use a photograph of a bike. So that's awesome. It has it in here. This is cool. Oh, yeah, trippy. Mm-hmm. Lots of moxie in this one. Nice, guys. Keep sending them through, and we will show them uh, throughout the live stream. Oh, whoops. Um, and we will pick our favorite at the end. And by we, I mean Sophie. Just joining, is she drawing with a tablet or with a mouse? Drawing with a, with a tablet. Yeah. Um, Wacom Cintiq. Mm-hmm. Or I guess it's, is it a tablet? It's like a monitor, kind of. They call it like a, a digital, I don't know, I forget what they call it. But yeah, it's like a monitor. You draw, draw on a monitor. Nice, we're getting more entrance. That's great. This is actually really coming together quickly. I'm surprised. 
<laughs> I'm also surprised. Yeah. I feel like I am like blacked out right now, and I'll wake up later, and they'll be <laughs> yeah. Because I'm just like really nervous. How and... did this happen? <laughs> no, you're doing great. Yeah, how are you finding like talking while you're drawing? Is it difficult or is it a little bit intuitive? Um, well, luckily you're a very good host, so I feel oh, at ease. Oh, thanks. Or more at ease than I probably would normally, knowing that I'm live streaming. Um, yeah, it's it's nice. I think I talk, uh, or like I draw more slowly when I'm talking, uh, for obvious reasons, because I'm just like... Yeah, you know. agreed. I mean, I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I like it. Although you don't get as much work done, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just fun. Feels like you're hanging out with your friends at art school again. Mm -hmm. um, can an iPad Pro do this same kind of drawing right into Illustrator? Hmm. If maybe into Photoshop. Um, there's an app called AstroPad that can you can use your iPad as basically what she's doing right now. You can draw right into Photoshop with it. Uh, so yeah, you could try that out. Eric wants to know what that turtle's gonna do to that little elf guy. Mm, good question. <laughs> he has bad intentions. Maybe they're good. Well, I was gonna give the turtle like a friend. Oh, look at him. So maybe they're, you know, gonna rescue him. Yeah. <laughs> or her. <laughs> Hello, friends. They come to get you. Yeah. Don't you worry. They're saying hopefully he's gonna give him a donut. Oh yeah. He looks like he wants one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll do that. It's time for a donut. Mm. With the iPad question, can't you try draw something in Sketch and import it into Illustrator? Yeah, you totally could. Clay, good call. So uh, Illustrator Sketch is a mobile app that you can get. Uh, that's basically like a mini version of Illustrator where you can draw vector shapes. Uh, if you have a CC subscription, you can send the things that you draw and create straight into the desktop version of Illustrator. Very powerful and handy if you are often on the go and not always at your computer to work. And if you like drawing an illustrator. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Agreed. Oh, he actually has a donut. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> the turtle will not eat him. I think turtles are vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> well, are they succulent people, though? Uh, hmm. Uh -oh. I guess they're aliens. Because okay. this is on a different planet. Yeah. So, true. Unclear. Very true. Um, someone is wondering, what is your favorite doodle of all time? Can you remember? Mm -hmm. Um, my new favorite is the hip hop one. It came out in August. Oh. It's really cool. You can like pretend to be a DJ and they, they got the rights to all these cool songs. Nice. So if you haven't played that one, you should check it out. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for people to look like at past doodles? Um, yeah, you can go to google.com slash doodles. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have every doodle. All the doodles. All the doodles you need. So, Nelson, for the contest, um, it is due in about an hour, hour and five minutes. So we are having a contest every segment, and the theme today is bikes. So you are going to use Photoshop or Illustrator CC 2018, um, import an actual photograph of a bike, and then draw an illustration that kind of surrounds uh, that theme. So here we have Roman for an earlier. He has an awesome illustration where he used an actual photograph of a bike and kind of formed this cute little editorial illustration around it and once you're done you're gonna upload it onto some sort of image sharing website like Dropbox or any other image uh, sharing service that you like to use post it in chat and then we can take a look at them very cool Donna says today's Google Doodle on Pad Thai is so great yeah that's by Juliana it's also her birthday today so happy, birthday. happy birthday Juliana happy birthday Juliana I know you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably busy eating pad thai for her birthday. That's what I would be doing. Yeah. Nice. We actually had really good Thai food last night. Mm. Total aside. Very good. Um, I'm a DJ that played the doodle for a whole hour and had a great time. Good job with that one. Oh, nice. Yay. And Elisa says, you only have one layer, but you made a tiny creature tinier. How? Uh, I have this on a, um, it's on a transparent layer, mm. if that makes sense. Right, so, so this background layer is the white, and then this is the drawing. There you go. Oh wait, Juliana is here. 
<laughs> there you go. Yay. Hooray. So do you find yourself resizing things often when you're just sketching things out? Um, yeah, I think it helps because, like, you never know how the composition... I mean, unless you have a very clear idea of the composition beforehand, mm -hmm. like, the focus can change and, like, the, the relationship of the size of the elements can change and you just don't want to, like, box yourself into a corner where everything's kind of evenly sized mm -hmm. or, like, awkwardly sized. Yeah. And so... It helps to just rearrange things and um, make sure the focus and everything still feels right. Yeah, I think that's a smart thing to do, especially when you get kind of far into a sketch. Maybe you're feeling a little weird about it, like, what's wrong with this? Trying to resize some things and make some sort of hierarchy mm -hmm. is great. And also doing the dreaded horizontal flip. Oh, yeah. It's smart, but really scary. I yeah. hate doing it. <laughs> oh, let's try it right now. Oh, no. Uh, it's okay. Okay, so it's a little bit, like, right yeah. centered, mm -hmm. so I could move it over a little bit. That That's would smart. help. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Flip it back. So what would you say is the reason for doing that kind of thing? Um, well, I first learned about it when I was drawing people mm -hmm. when I was in middle school. Oh. And um, I realized that, like, everyone looks weird if you... <laughs> If you do the flip canvas horizontal because mm -hmm. you like got used to you know the proportions of their face and stuff yeah right so it's a little bit it's like good to make sure you're not like just getting used to how something looks because it's kind of like looking at your picture of yourself in like a mirror yeah like you usually see yourself in the mirror but then when you see yourself normally or in a photograph you're like wow i look very different from how yeah, i pictured myself definitely you get this like mental image of what it would look like mm -hmm. And even if you're drawing something when it's not completely like vertically in front of you, like if it's flat on the table, that can get a little, the mm -hmm. perspective can get skewed. So sometimes picking it up and looking at it straight up and mm -hmm. down or how you would want someone to look at it is important. Yeah, I think that's why those drafting tables are at an angle too. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it straight up. And I guess that's why this Cintiq is at an angle. Yeah, well, great. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a really helpful test. It's a scary one, but it's a helpful one. Um, can you clarify if this is made up of a single image or one large transparent visual? Uh, it's one large transparent visual. Mm -hmm. So all of the marks you've made are on its own layer and the white is on its own layer. Mm -hmm. Nice, so you can easily cut things out. You don't have to worry about white getting cut out and mm -hmm. oof, it can get gnarly. Yeah. So I wonder how many of you guys in chat are working on your pieces to join the contest. Let us know if you're working on it, if you're planning on submitting. We've got a couple so far, but I know maybe there'll be more closer to the end. And in about 15-ish minutes, we're gonna do a giveaway. So all you have to do is be with us on be.net slash live. That's the best way to watch us. That's where you can find out about the contest. That's where you can join the giveaway. You can chat uh, and you can find other people on Behance. So be.net slash live. And in a couple minutes, I'm going to say go. All you have to do is say something in chat and we'll pick someone at random to win three posters. That's right. Three whole posters. Posters of what? So the posters <laughs> are of three illustrations that were created on stream live here. So the one on the left is Mr. T by Robzilla, middle is Jingwei, I think that's like a pool party scene. And the one on the right is Christine Heron, it's um, travel tags. Actually the one in the middle, I'm pretty sure Jing did something similar where she asked chat for ideas and she kind of threw random stuff that chat said into the pool. Cool. Which explains why there's a pineapple and a dog and a cat in the pool. It's so cute. Yeah, so you'll win all three of those. And like I said, on the first stream that I hosted, holidays are coming up. Give them away as gifts. Keep them all to yourself. No one's going to judge you. They're yours. So yeah, make sure you're chatting and we will pick someone at random in a couple minutes. Cool. Mm -hmm. mm. Someone's asking, can you show how you scale the little gnome? Mm -hmm. uh, so I just took a lasso and I drew around it, and then I just uh, command T on a Mac or control T on a PC, and then you can like make it bigger, or you know, keep it that way, or you can make it 
small you can make it smaller um, and move it around so it's like yeah. very easy with Photoshop mm -hmm. kind of left it big there you go are you thinking of some sort of color scheme for this or are you still just do you think about all these things at once or you just focus on the lines first and then value second or what um not sure what the color scheme will this for this will be yet but um I usually do the lines first and then I do like a very rough color key mm -hmm. and um, just kind of like play with it a little bit, see what works well. Um, I'm thinking that it will be pretty like greenish gray for the most part mm. since it's the inside of a cave yeah. and um, maybe the water will be glowing or something since it's Ooh. presumably some weird alien water. Yes, it always <laughs> glows. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Excited to see that. And uh, so is Holly. She says, looking forward to, oh well, no, she says, I'm excited to see what you do next. Mm, cool. Yeah. Someone else says, looking forward to tomorrow's theme. I am too. Even I don't know what it is. It's a total mystery. Oh boy. Rosina wants to know, what's the favorite job that you've ever done? Google, not um, Google. I think including freelance. Mm -hmm. um, Hmm. I like them all. I think that like I I had one that was like I probably remember this just because it didn't work out and I was sad about it. Aww. But um I'm really into jigsaw puzzles. Oh. Like really, really into jigsaw puzzles. Like how into them? <laughs> like I have a I bought a a board that you can move around and put your <laughs> jigsaw puzzles on and so like you can clear your table off. Yeah. Um is it but just a big piece of wood? It's like a big piece of like like thick cardboard that mm. has felt on top so oh, it doesn't slide around. Smart. Like the pieces don't yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's very nerdy. But um <laughs> I almost was gonna do some jigsaw puzzles for the Ravensburger puzzle company. Um unfortunately it didn't quite work out, but um I just keep thinking about that, like, oh, I would really want to do that again sometime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that ever something that you would want to just fabricate yourself, or would you like to do it for a client? Um, I'm down to try myself, although probably only for, like, inside jokey type puzzles. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's more fun that way. Yeah, <laughs> right. Sometimes those inside jokey things can explode and become mm -hmm. an internet phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John Luis, uh, the previous videos are available for viewing. I'm hoping maybe someone, one of the moderators, can send you over to that. But there should be recordings of all the streams, even past streams, weeks, weeks ago. Alien water has to glow. It is the law. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dominic wants to know how long did it take before you found your process of illustrating? Um, I think I'm still finding it. I mm -hmm. mean... I started drawing when I was a little kid and um, like, you know, it, it, it's kind of evolved over the years. Like I used to do a lot of um, fan art of like Harry Potter and Wicked and like books that I was really into mm -hmm. when I was in middle school. Inuyasha, all that good stuff. Oh yeah. Anime. Oh yeah. Um, but like after, after deciding that like I wanted to pursue it as a career I think I kind of started to learn like oh this is how like the old Disney animators would draw mm -hmm. or like this is how like Miyazaki does things and kind of expanded what I was interested in and um, learned some techniques from watching movies or like reading art of books and stuff oh, like yeah. that um, and also like using Photoshop kind of changed or like I think that I would be a very different artist if I didn't have Photoshop mm -hmm. from a young age because I like don't really I'm not a very confident color mixer so mm -hmm. when it comes time to paint traditionally I feel like very timid mm -hmm. which is actually like kind of sad and I'm trying to change that yeah. by practicing more mm -hmm. but um, I think due to drawing a lot digitally and doing a lot of digital painting I started like um, getting really bold with color like using mm -hmm. a lot of bright colors because I can because it's visual because like you know it can be like fluorescent or glowy or whatever mm -hmm. I like using light effects because you know you can do that in Photoshop and make things like 
really bright on a dark surface. Oh yeah. Um, so I think it's um, slowly evolving over time still. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting to hear about your first inspirations and like how you've come to where you are. Do you feel like your time in college was specifically kind of informative or was there a time that was more informative than that for you? Um, college was great. I highly recommend if anyone wants to go to cartoon school, you should go to CalArts because it's like the best. <laughs> Wait, um, what is cartoon school? Is that like, a school? Well, no, it's like oh. <laughs> if you want to go to school for cartoons. Gotcha. <laughs> You can't, you know, at least I feel like I had a great experience mm -hmm. and um, learned a lot from my fellow students and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that like the, wait, what was the question again? Like what, what did I learn from school? Or just like what time in your life was the most informative for your process now? Um, yeah, I think it was definitely like CalArts, mm -hmm. um, just learning how to work hard. I think that was the main, the main like yeah. lesson that I learned. Mm -hmm. Like how to work hard, work quickly, and oh, yeah. um, like show my work to other people and be more confident about it. Cause I would never let anyone see what I was drawing when I was younger. Oh, yeah. Just because you wanted to keep it to yourself, or because you were scared of what they would think. Um, like both, and also I was drawing a lot of like anime fan art. So yeah. It was, like, oh my and, gosh. You know, like oh I don't want you to see this mom like <laughs> yeah actually I drew Inuyasha fan art in my diary when I was little and mm -hmm. my mom called me out she's like what is this <laughs> why does he have ears uh, and I'm like mom yeah. you don't understand <laughs> yeah she's like yeah you don't know yeah it's good it's a good thing he's just half dog half demon mm -hmm. it's fine <laughs> uh, so people are wondering what this little green patch is uh, this is like, um, I'm trying to figure out the color key for the main piece right now, so I'm just playing, putting some colors down, trying to test out like what it will look like mm -hmm. on a small scale. Um, and so, apologies, that doesn't really quite look like anything yet, but... No. Yeah. That's helpful. And this is maybe not something that people would always think to do uh, mm -hmm. before they kind of jump into the full color. I know that oftentimes I have to do this just to get the values right, more specifically than the colors. Mm -hmm. so my values are all over the place. Yeah, it helps to make it black and white too, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see um, what's whether the contrast is high enough. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, people are like, that's an awesome idea, smart. Very true. Is that something you learned as an animation student, more specifically? Um, I think it's like a shortcut for digital painting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't quite recall learning this in school specifically, but um, kind of became a thing that I did just to like do something faster mm -hmm. than I normally would. Right. Because once you have this down, you can totally let it influence the rest of the piece mm -hmm. and just go for it. It's great. So is this your color palette Ruben wants to know? Um, kind of starting to be? It's forming into something mm -hmm. resembling a color palette. But there's only like a few colors in it so far. Mm -hmm. So... Very cool. I like this. There's so much exploration during this stage. Mm -hmm. You can kind of... Anything can happen. I wonder if anybody in chat has ever done this kind of color keying before. Or color studies, if you've had success with it. Let us know. I definitely like doing it. And I also like to do a bunch for the same one and kind of mm -hmm. see how different things can get. Yeah, and a, a cool way f that I like to do that sometimes is I, if I have something f relatively like keyed out, I'll just do like a hue saturation oh. filter or something mm -hmm. just to see what it would look like if it were like blue or yellow or something. Like yeah, that. you can totally surprise yourself and you're like, I didn't think I would ever make this mm -hmm. squirrel purple. <laughs> but it looks sweet. <laughs> uh, hello from Conway, Arkansas. Welcome. Hello. Mm -hmm. Mary wants to know, does anyone else besides me draw with a mouse and a supersized mouse pad instead of a tablet? Whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. Like how, how to do that. How supersized we talking? Like three by three? That's crazy. And Mary, what kind of work do you make with that kind of technique? Sometimes I'll use a mouse if I'm 
just painting with the polygonal lasso tool and I don't really need that kind of really fine detail that drawing by hand will get me. Use a trackpad, whoa. Welcome everybody joining in. If you guys are just joining in, this is Sophie Diao. She is an illustrator and she is building this illustration based off of inspiration from you guys, from chat. Um, I think the illustration their inspiration was some otherworldly cave with some critters. We threw a turtle in there, a donut, maybe some other things will get thrown in there before we're done. I've got about an hour left, but don't worry, Sophie will be back the next day, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, and we'll have maybe this same illustration, mm -hmm. but maybe new ones. Yeah, we'll see how yeah. this one turns out. Mm -hmm. We'll chat about that at the end, yeah. see how you're feeling. Yeah, I don't like this craft. <laughs> just make it green. Yeah, just make it a normal turtle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ryan says, I've been inundated with meetings for the past few hours. What did I miss? We have a new guest already. <laughs> well, Ryan, I don't know what you've missed. We had Corey before this. We have Sophie now. It's all been awesome. I hope your meetings have gone well. Ruben wants to see a cactus there. Okay. There you go. I like cactus. Yeah, you're like, I can make that happen. This is your dream. <laughs> there should be a really big creature filling out the cave exit entrance in the background. Ooh, spooky. Ooh, that is cool. Demogorgon style. Dean wants to know, what's the easiest way to get started using a smaller Wacom and how do you beat the learning curve of drawing and looking at a screen instead of what you're drawing on? Mm, I started using the uh, Intuos 3 back when I first started drawing digitally. Um, and it was, I think, like a seven inch tablet. Um, I think that the learning curve was a little bit easier just cause I was like very young. Right. Or like I was like 13 or something. Mm. And so it was like my first time doing anything like digitally. Um, but I think that like the, I think practice makes perfect. I know it's a cliche, but also sure. like you can, it's almost easier in some ways to draw on a tablet because you don't have your hand in the way. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. I'm and always so, like looking under when yeah. I'm using a Cintiq. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of, um, it's kind of like a nice perk. And um, I would say just like keep practicing and make sure to not, um, uh, maybe one way to do it is like through blind contour drawing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So you just get used to not looking at your hand when you're drawing. Yeah. Um, blind contour drawing is when you like are looking at something in front of you, but you're drawing it uh, on paper and you're not looking down at your hand at all. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that people do for like figure drawing a lot to just like practice. Yeah. So I think that might be one way to try. I love and hate blind contour drawing. It is so fun, but it never looks good. Highly recommend. Uh, someone says, masking photos helped uh, you a lot to feel it, now it feels the same as drawing on paper. Oh, nice. So they practiced masking to get used to using a tablet. Hmm. Yeah, I think, like Sophie said, practice makes perfect. Um, especially if you're thrown into a job where you have to use a tablet. And it's like, well, have to do it. And now it feels like second nature, kind of. Still a little bit of a struggle. I don't think I'll ever get over that. Um, Eric says, if I'm really struggling, I'll place paper sketch over the Intuos and trace over it with the stylus. Oh, interesting. I will often put sketch paper on top of my stylus, but just to get that like nice mm. kind of drawing texture. Cool. Yeah, but after a while, the paper turns, like, brown, and it's really oh. rose, but I'm like, but it's still perfectly fine. <laughs> nice, we're getting some submissions in. If you guys want to submit your art before the deadline, which is in about 40, 45 minutes, go ahead and submit it now, and we can take a peek at it early. Don't worry, we'll look at it again uh, before the contest is over, and we can critique and show everybody how creative you guys are. I like these pops of like primary color mm -hmm. that you're thrown in here. Ooh, blue critter. I make a blue 
Ooh. Gnome thing. He is an alien. Yeah. He's a Navi. Let's <laughs> throw a tail on him. What art do I submit? So Grayson, we're doing a contest. So during every segment of the next three days, there will be one winner for the contest, which is revolving around the theme of bikes. What you're gonna do is find a picture of a bike, use Photoshop or C <laughs> Photoshop CC or Illustrator CC 2018, uh, import the picture of the bike and form an illustration around it or involving it in some way. So then upload that image somehow and send it to us via a link in chat and we'll take a, pic a peek at it. Um, you could win Creative Cloud for a year, which is amazing. One person will win every segment. So that's four people a day for three days. Pretty good odds, I would say. Looks like Papa Smurf. <laughs> oh, is he naked? Little naked oh, no, Smurf man? He's oh. <laughs> uh, just trying to decide what color the glowing water should be. Ah. All right, we've got like an acid green. It looks too sickly. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, most of my like playing around is just like deciding what color everything's gonna be. Yeah. So how are you changing the color so quickly? Um. So I usually I lock transparency. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I will click on a color, and if I want to try it out, I just do like option delete which fills it Ooh. um and then i can just do that very quickly without like pasting or coloring it mm -hmm. in so it's really helpful yeah bubblegum pink hello, hello. <laughs> we were chatting earlier in the earlier streams about our favorite um hotkeys and commands oh, okay. do you have specific ones that you use like all the time mm, this one's a really good one i use this like quick fill a lot. Mm -hmm. So the one that you just showed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. I also like to um, just like cut and paste mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I'm if I'm like moving something around. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, I'll think of more as I go. Yeah. Through. What about you guys in chat? What are your favorite commands? Let us know. I'm trying to think. I have to like put my hands on the keyboard and be like, what do I use all the time? I forget. <laughs> it's hard when you're not using Illustrator or Photoshop mm -hmm. right this second. Uh, did you do today's Pad Thai doodle? No, that was your friend. Yeah. Ju that was my friend Julian. Yeah. There you go. And it's her birthday. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday yeah, happy to birthday. her. Oh, a space bar. Yeah, totally. I use that too oh, a lot. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a good one. Um, I also like to like put everything in a group, like duplicate everything and then put it in a group. Ah. And then that way I can like change the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I can do like, oh, clipping mask too. So I just put everything in a group. Um, and now I can like make everything different. Whoa, Yay. party. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the, like the drawback of having learned to paint in Photoshop is that like I really rely on this a lot oh. rather than like knowing exactly what I'm going to do for colors. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of like this messing around trying to see what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But I think that this is something that's very traditional painter-y, like doing tiny little color studies, mm -hmm. although you don't have to mix every single little color. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the blue alien is like, take this, keep it a secret, <laughs> keep it safe. <laughs> it's the one ring, the donut ring. All right, guys, I see all of your awesome commands in chat, yet the bracket keys, I use those all the time. And since you guys are being so active in chat, we're going to give you a little gift. So if you are on be.net slash live, that is where you need to be to enter this giveaway. So what you're going to win is all three of these posters that are shown on screen right now. All three of these posters are made by awesome artists here live on Adobe Live. Uh, the one on the left is by Rob Zilla, that's Mr. T. Middle is Jingwei Pool Party, and the right is Christine, and that is um, some travel tags, which are actually really cool, and I kind of want to cut them out and put them on my suitcase. 
So you will win all three. You can do whatever you want with them. Give them away. Keep them for yourself. Uh, all you have to do is put one line of chat into the chat. So say hello, say your favorite color, say whatever you want, and we're going to randomly pick a winner very soon. So yeah, get some hype going in chat. Get excited. And let's see. Free awesome stuff. Yeah. Let's see how many people we can get in chat all hyped up. Cool. Hello. Hey there. Blue. Oh, nice. It's a good color. Whoa, it's flying. <laughs> wow, those sweet, sweet posters. Nice. Oh, your favorite color is 18% gray. It's very specific. Wow. <laughs> nice. We've got just a couple of seconds to get your entrance in. And don't worry, if you do not win this time, you can win... Um, during all the other segments during this week. So we have tomorrow, we have the next day, there's four segments a day, you do the math, a lot of chances to win. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I need the posters. Oh, somebody's pet tortoise went into hibernation <gasps> yesterday. What? Congratulations. What? <laughs> Wait, is that good? <laughs> is that like a specific day? Do they just go into hibernation and you like celebrate it? All right, guys, we've got a winner. Are you guys ready? Drum roll. Susan Aldridge, you are the winner. Thank you for being in chat. That's amazing. Thank you for participating and being with us at be.net slash live. We'll get into contact with you to get you your prizes and enjoy those sweet, sweet posters. Hooray, Susan. Congratulations. Okay, their tortoise is just fine. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Really? Yeah. What kind of tortoise is it? Is it one of the really big ones? All right, Susan, get in chat so we know you're here. What's up, Sarah? Welcome back. Oh, I'm really liking this kind of navy that you have going on at the top. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You're like, I don't know. Um, the classic artist response. Mm. <laughs> Don't know quite what I'm doing right now, but it's just exploring. Mm -hmm. It's a desert tortoise. 21 years old. He's my part-time oh, pet. Wow. What do you mean part-time pet? That's awesome. That tortoise is a grown adult. <laughs> Lucky Susan, yeah. Did 45 minutes pass that quickly? I guess so. Oh my god, I'm like nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. You got time. So we've got about 35 minutes until the contest submissions totally close and we will pick a winner. So get your submissions in. You can get them in early. We'll take a peek at them early if you do. Um, there's a couple already coming through, so we're excited to take a peek at those. When will you review the bike submissions? When we get some more in. Come on, Helen, get it in. What presentation software are you using? The magic of the Adobe Studio. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Oh, cool, the contest is still on. Yes, so what we just did was the giveaway and that's totally random, but the contest um, is run four times a day during each segment. And the theme is the, uh, different each day. So today is bikes. You're going to follow these rules and you can also find the rules for the contest if you go to be.net slash live and click on the contest tab. Uh, all the details are in there and I hope you guys win because the prize is a Creative Cloud subscription for a year and that is nothing to scoff at. Mark, is she supposed to finish in 30 minutes? Yeah, she has to finish <laughs> or else she doesn't get dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> No, she can do whatever she wants, actually. She can start over right now. Has anyone done that? I don't think so. Because oh. I wanted to eat dinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she could work on it just today and start something fresh tomorrow. She could work on this all three days. It's really up to whatever the artist fancies. Jan Eric says, I'd love to enter hibernation, too, until Game of Thrones comes back. <laughs> I'm going to be hibernating for a long time. Mm, okay. 
Mm. Yeah, it looks good. Do -do -do. Looks like the submissions are coming in. That's great. Maybe we can, maybe the cave walls can be purple tones. Ooh. Hmm. They kind of are, like, maybe they're more dark blue, I guess. Yeah, they're kind of, like, dark bluish mm -hmm. right now. We could add some purple highlights or something. I feel like there's definitely a story here, and I like it. Oh, yeah. It's, um, it's a very mysterious story. It's probably a donut commercial. <laughs> For alien donuts. Yeah on the alien planet. This is actually not even a weird scene to them. <laughs> yeah. This is totally normal. Just normal donut delivery on a normal Tuesday. Jake says, Sophie, you're doing great. Aw, thanks, Jake. Yeah, it's true. Very true. Give us a give us a plus one in chat if you think Sophie should live stream more often. I would do a plus one if I had chat open. Boom, plus one. What do you imagine to be the plant or objects hanging from the ceilings? So those little like dangly. Mm. What if they're like alive, like worms or something? I don't know. Ooh, like glow worms? Yeah. You're getting so many plus ones right now. Good. Plus a thousand, definitely plus one. Boom. Ruben is wondering, what the purpose of the original sketch is now. Will you go back into that or will you start completely again from the color study? Um, I'll probably go back into that. So mm -hmm. usually uh, after I do the color study, I move it to a new Photoshop document and then I just refer back and forth to each other. That way this, actually since I'm only using one monitor right mm -hmm. now, I'll probably just keep it on top. Oh nice. That's usually, um, I do the two document thing when I have the luxury of having two monitors. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes to worms. <laughs> there's a creature in the back now. Is there? And there's that like white hulking figure. Oh, that spooked <laughs> <know>. me. <laughs> Scary. Nice. Yeah, guys, send in your contest entrance. It's your last chance today to win Creative Cloud. Don't miss out. Anybody in chat have a puzzle gig for Sophie? <laughs> yeah, this is a good way. Everybody, go ask your favorite puzzle maker if they need puzzles made. <laughs> and I'm wondering for the people in chat what their processes are, processes are. Like, do you do something similar to Sophie where you sketch and then do a little color study and then go back in? Do you just dive right in kind of traditional painting style, maybe with an underpainting? Do you build more like um, layers or like graphic design with shapes on top of each other? How you do this? Tell me. Sophie is the puzzle queen, <laughs> says Caitlin. Aww. <laughs> Where did the passion for puzzles come from? I don't know. Probably <laughs> just like having a lot of like downtime as a kid mm, yeah <laughs> interesting i always got bored with them as mm. a kid i think it's like relaxing to do them and watch tv at the same time mm -hmm. or just like turn your brain off for a bit yeah um it's also like a nice way for me to study old paintings if i get oh. like paintings as jigsaw puzzles mm -hmm. you can see all the brush strokes and stuff that's really interesting and you have to really look hard at it mm -hmm. to find the kind of shapes that you need puzzles are dope Agreed. <laughs> Ooh. Dark? Yeah, I'll make it dark. Those dark plants. That means I should make this side mountain thing a little bit lighter. Ah. Because that will just help the composition, yeah. you think? Very cool. These little decisions are made that kind of push and pull. Mm -hmm. Value, story. Uh, Caitlin says, I will paint on top of my sketch on a new layer, but I really like how Sophie makes a smaller box on top of her sketch. 
It helps not to get lost in the details and just focus on the main colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough not to get lost in the weeds. Um, and I know that's something that you learn in painting classes or when you're learning to paint in general, like don't just draw the eyes. Like you gotta throw some color on everything, kind of get your values down before you really jump into finessing anything. <laughs> Eliza says they follow the traditional painting style, but I think I'm going to adapt Sophie's style. It will make the piece a lot stronger. Pre-planning always helps. There you go. Wow, so much uh, pressure. I, I hope know. it works out for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Antoine says I'm wondering if you size up the thumbnail drawing and it becomes the same size as the whole image. Uh, no, because it's better to keep it kind of loose, mm -hmm. I think. Um, also, like, Everything kind of shifts a little bit when you go from color key to the main painting. Um, you might find that something that you thought would look good when it's nice and blobby doesn't actually look good. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to like have that as a reference but not follow it too strictly. You guys are dropping in these contest entrants. It's awesome. We could actually take a peek at a couple got about 25 ish minutes before the contest ends so we're gonna look at some I love this one I don't know what it is it might be pizza it might be a paper mache mask look ma no hands mm -hmm. so much sure. attitude and we've got bear on a bike mm -hmm. I really like how they use like a technical old drawing of a bike instead of like an actual mm -hmm. photograph yeah the back wheels bigger mm-hmm yeah We've got Dino on a bike. Nice I love all these. Wheelie. Yeah, all these animals on bikes is amazing. Got those action lines in there. <laughs> We've got a Totoro bike ah. with a donut. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. I love Totoro. Who's pedaling? Magic. There's no <laughs> pedals. <laughs> but how does cat bus work? I don't know, but it works. <laughs> cat bus just runs. Oh yeah, with its many many legs. <laughs> Oh man, awesome job, you guys. Oh, we actually have one more. Another animal on another bike, and it's on a Bianchi, mm. which is real fancy. Mm. Nice, I love the kind of the shape character of this, very swoopy. Good job, guys. Thank you for entering. We'll have Sophie pick the winner in just a bit. Keep entering, though. That's not all. In pre-planning, do you ever sketch your image traditionally and then scan it in? Uh, if I do like a sketch on paper in my sketchbook, I usually just take a picture with my iPhone Same. and then like paste it into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, I don't own a scanner. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really feel like unless you really need those crisp lines like you're inking a comic or something like that, if you're just gonna paint over it, then taking a picture is fine with me. I actually remember the first time that I just used my phone to take a picture, mm -hmm. and I was like, why have I yeah. not been doing this my entire so life? Yeah. Does Sophie name her layers at work? Cause she's not naming them now. Uh, no. No, never? <laughs> No. Oh man. That's alright though. You don't have to if it works for you. Well, I name them silly things sometimes. Oh, to confuse yourself even more? Yeah. Uh, don't worry, Ahmed. We are not picking a winner yet. We're just showing some of the contestants. Yeah, I'm like a 50 50 kind of person. Half the time I name them and half the time I don't. So mm -hmm. it's like still pretty confusing. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're. Um, I think it's helpful to name layers. I usually do it if I'm passing it off to someone else. Oh, but, yeah. Um, usually I just make a new layer so quickly I don't even like remember to. Mm. Yeah, what is your process for making new layers? When do you decide that you need a new one? Um, uh, I'll make a new layer if I'm going to paint something that's going on top of, like, for example, this water 
Mm-hmm. Oh, that's kind of cool. I make it without. <laughs> um, this water, I'll make a new layer to go on top of it if mm-hmm. I want to add like shadows. Gotcha. Like, or like these reflections. Uh huh. Um, because that way I can easily remove them without mm-hmm. painting over. Um, things like that. Where yeah. But uh, for example, I didn't add a new layer to make this gradient to make it like glowy here, mm-hmm. just because that was. It seemed like um, that was going to be something I was going to stick with. Yeah, so. right. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. If you're sure about it, then mm-hmm. no need. Uh, if you're not sharing a file, you don't need to name the layers. Potentially, unless you confuse yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy drawing architecture? Um, I like drawing architecture in the sense that like I like drawing houses mm, just houses yeah <laughs> but I don't think I could really design like a skyscraper or anything yeah um, right I don't quite have the like patience to sit mm-hmm. down and figure out all the facets and the windows and like the, all that good stuff yeah if you're not really into that kind of thing mm-hmm. it's hard to kind of muddle through that definitely <laughs> Glorian says it is 2.20 a.m. in Greece. Holy moly. Aww. That's amazing. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Some of you guys have been sticking around since 9 a.m. this morning, Pacific time. That's crazy. <laughs> Jan Eric says, best argument for not naming your layers. Do you name your thoughts? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good argument? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds possible. Yeah. There you go. I know, have a lot of friends that just turn on the auto select tool. So when you just click mm. on something, it selects a layer. But I make so many layers that they're always on top of each mm-hmm. other. And I'm like, which one is it going to select? I don't know. Yeah, I like doing that for, I'll do the move tool. And then if you right click on the mo- the move tool, it like shows you what you're clicking on. Is that the same thing as the auto select layer? Or is that something different? Mm, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I was I reading click something. On this move tool and I right click on the donut, I can find exactly oh, where the donut is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. That's better than auto select, I think. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to put everything. Okay, here I would name the layer as like. Yeah, it's a, it's a color key. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> it's its own little thing. Um, there you go. I think it's good. Yeah. I think now I can probably move on this is a good enough base for me to move on to the final big color you're brave you can do it okay (laughs) um someone is asking do you have any tips for designer illustration students that are about to graduate it's a scary Mm, time i would say um make sure you remember to draw for yourself Um, I think a lot of students in their last year will freak out and be like, I'll just draw whatever people want me to draw because I want a job, which is like probably like the rational thing to think, (laughs) but it also kind of makes drawing less fun, especially because you're already stressed out and you already are like worried about your future and all that stuff. So anything you can do to like remember that you actually like drawing and it's for a good reason and you like went to school to like pursue a hobby and a passion mm-hmm. like i think that's probably yeah. Like, yeah you should just remember that you still like drawing oh my not gosh just doing it for money yeah <laughs> keep it as a hobby and a passion yeah. just do it for money now <laughs> hopefully mm-hmm. um you look away for a minute and the colors have really come together oh. totally agreed yes. and someone's wondering why do the miniature when you can just start straight on the sketch Is it kind of just to get a smaller, more compact designed idea? Yeah, that way I don't have the lines of the sketch getting in the way of the color key. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, it's easier to do it small. Because if you do it big, you're like, it takes longer, it's more laggy, and Mm -hmm. like Photoshop is trying to reconcile this like thousands of pixels. Right. um, It's just a little bit like faster. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it forces you to make more decisions quicker, Mm -hmm. I think, and not, like, worry about what color are their eyes. Mm -hmm. Just decide that it's going to be blue. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would name this layer sketch, just so I don't select it later. 
I put it on multiply and then I make the opacity lower. Mm. Um, then I can put stuff underneath it. Um, here I would take the biggest color, so it's like this like dark bluish gray type mm -hmm. of color, and then fill the entire piece. Oh goodness. Um, that's like my base basically, because everything is going to build on top of it. Um, let's see, then I would take this watercolor, because it's the second biggest piece, mm -hmm. um, and I would fill in, I would drag a box and like fill in where the water is going to go, mm -hmm. um, and then you can slowly just basically start working up from there. Um, I'm probably going to do this like outcropping of rock next, just because it like, I'm working from back to forward mm -hmm. basically, so it's the next like most front facing thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll basically just do like a quick, actually, I can't really see my lines here because it's too gray, so I'll flip it, um, and I might make it like a little bit, I'll do like overlay instead, where can I do it? Yeah. Ooh, so yeah, you can see it a little mm -hmm. bit better. I love this part where you actually get to kind of build the real shapes. Mm -hmm. Feels very good. And Laura, don't worry, we're going to look at the other uh, two illustrations that you did. We got you, girl. And so we have about, ooh, not much time at all. About 20 minutes, okay. a little bit less, cool. um, but more for the contest entrance. Okay. About 20 minutes until we're going to cut off the contest and we're going to pick a winner. So if you want to enter, go ahead and submit it as soon as you can and we'll take a peek at it. You can just upload it via Dropbox um, or any other image uploading site. Post the link in chat and we'll get it going for you. Mary says, I have some packaging designs for frozen crab that have to be in China by 9 a.m. their time, which is 90 minutes from now. What? Mary, go! <laughs> Please, go finish your job. The crab's gonna throw up. It's gonna thaw. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. So you do packaging design for crab meat? That's pretty cool. Oh, nice. So what is your... Is it set on some sort of um, layer style, or, um, or is it just um, the opacity? This is the opacity of the brush, so... Gotcha. It's like, yeah, it depends how hard you press. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I use this big brush for, like, blocking in huge things if I don't want to use lasso tool. Yeah. Um, and kind of blending a little bit. Very cool. Yeah, Mary, that's great. Um, that's a great piece of advice. If you want to be successful, find a niche that most others might shy away mm. from. This is especially good for illustrators who are like, how do I draw pictures for people when there's all, all mm -hmm. already all these amazing illustrators? Got to find a niche. That's true. Who needs illustrations? All kinds of magazines and publications do. Uh, you found package design to be very lucrative with, with a few, very few good designers. There you go, you found your niche. That's awesome. Nice guys, you are dropping in these entrants. It's great, can't wait to look at them. Oh wow, they are popping up very quickly. It's great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really impressed by the progress you've made so far in this. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. It's like a full-blown, well-designed piece. Well, it was good to get everyone's suggestions. Yeah. What was a good idea. What about the donut? Yeah. How much time do we have? We have... You have about 15 minutes to submit your contest entry. But go ahead and get it in sooner if you can. Yeah, Mary, good luck. Seriously, get those package designs in. Mm -hmm. 
You must be a real professional cutting it close like that. <laughs> Very confident. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry before they thaw. Totally. Uh, Dean. Oh, I missed what Dean said. Um, Eric says, I didn't go to school for graphic design and recently started their own my own business, providing design services to small local businesses who have had the same branding for 50 plus years. Oh. Yeah, there you go. So do you approach them and say, hey, your branding looks kind of old. Can I make you new ones? Or what do you do? Do they come to you? Tell us about it. That's very cool that you have your own business. That's not something a lot of people can say. But yeah, Abdullah says, Sophie is so quick. She's making decisions on the fly. <laughs> if you don't uh, stop to think, you don't have to take responsibility. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're like, it just I'm happened. <laughs> I don't know. I was doing a puzzle and it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Dean, thanks for reposting. I'm a web and graphic designer for a signage company that is Australia-wide. For a first job, it was pretty fun, and I work from home. I emailed them and asked them for a job, and they gave it to you straight up. Wow. Mm -hmm. cool. You know, it's surprising how often that can happen. Like, if you make a good use case for your work, hey, I think you could use my skills for this. Sometimes they have the budget, and we'll do it. And Nicholas has a really good question. Sophie, do you ever zoom in? Mm. Doesn't seem like it. I probably normally would, but I have been like nervous and forgetting <laughs> to do normal things. So. Yeah, but I think not zooming in is probably better. You kind of um, just have to paint the whole thing for what it's worth. I like to zoom in if I'm doing more detailed stuff, but mm. right now it's still blocking in things. So sometimes I like if I'm zoomed in, I forget what the other side of the piece looks like, and uh -huh. then I screw up. So. Yeah, right. And you can so easily get caught in the weeds mm -hmm. of like over-designing and over-detailing one little piece. At least, I think for me, not zooming in is good, because I am very apt to zoom in all the way and mm -hmm. like totally render a fingernail and then zoom out, and I'm like, what am I doing? This is like <laughs> a children's book. Ahmad says, I am still a third year landscape architecture student. It is a pretty new major here in Egypt, and I have a broad love for designing and drawing in general. That's very cool. Landscape architecture. Has that been something you've always been passionate about? It must be almost like urban planning. Also, people are saying you're working on a Cintiq, so the drawing is also really big and mm -hmm. you don't need to zoom in. <laughs> That's true. If I zoomed in, it would be like the size of my entire body. Yeah, <laughs> your whole body. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas, you zoom in and get stuck in the details. Totally. All right, guys, we have exactly 10 minutes for you to get your contest entrance in. Come on, entries. Come on through. 10 minutes you can you could start now if you haven't started yet start now grab a picture of a bike drop it into photoshop or illustrator make a little illustration around it have some story boom send it over you could win i love how the kind of curved little pebbly mm -hmm. lines kind of bisect that straighter yeah. overarching that's nice. Lots yeah, of movement. I like to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Makes it easy to um, make something look nice. Yeah, and also makes it very clear that there's depth there. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Paul. Get it sent in. Awesome, Cassandra. And plus designs. There you go. Nice. I was trying to think if I was doing an illustration around a bike, what would mm -hmm. I make? I don't know. I'm thinking like maybe a bike transformer of some sorts. Did you apply to RISD? I didn't. Oh, they have the assignment where they, you have to draw a bike. Oh, um, when I was going to graphic design school, quote unquote, 
um, I had to do a, like an instructional how to change a bike tire, mm. which was really annoying. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I'm not a graphic designer. So I left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cassandra, we got yours, I'm pretty sure. They're coming in. Coming in hot. <clears throat> My Behance page is still so beautifully empty. It's so beautifully empty. It's a great way to put it. Yeah, like come see my Behance portfolio. It's really <laughs> conceptual. <laughs> but really, an empty Behance page is the best because people can imagine the art that they see on that blank page. Totally. That's a good point. Let me know how that works for you. <laughs> Got so many tabs open, so many great designs. Are you feeling prepared to choose somebody's fate? Um, what did I get? Free Adobe Free for year. A year, yep. Oh my god, that's a good gift. Yeah, it is a good gift. Um, I guess I got <laughs> You're like, <laughs> no choice. <laughs> uh, Nelson says, I notice you use the eraser tool. Do you ever choose to use masks instead? Masks? Mm -hmm. um, um, well, I use them only if I have like a specific purpose in mind. Mm -hmm. Like, um, let's say I wanted to make this like cave wall thingy. I wanted to give it some like wavy texture lines or something. Mm. So, uh, sorry, I'll just like <laughs> fill in behind this thing. Um, so I'll do it if I want to be like making it look all wavy and stuff, mm -hmm. like filling in these, using the mask tool to like yeah. give it some, but other than that, um, it's not really my first thing that I think of. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's less immediate than the eraser tool. Right. Um, you have to like right click and make, you know, do mask and all that stuff. Right. So I usually go for the quickest possible solution to any problem. Yeah, there you go whatever works best for mm -hmm. you and if you don't need a mask for mm -hmm. then no reason to use it uh, mckinley says you should definitely continue to work on this tomorrow i'm excited to see the way that it turns out okay i will now you have to <clears throat> nice you guys you are dropping these entries like it's hot darren my first adobe live stream welcome Thanks for hanging out. We do this every week, Tuesday through Thursday. You'll have awesome live artists doing all kinds of things, motion graphics, photography, illustration, mobile stuff, prototyping. It's really kind of all encompassing and you can learn so much for free. Uh, will we be notified if you do not win the contest? You'll be notified if you do win the contest. So if you don't hear anything, you didn't win. Probably. <laughs> um, this is fun, by the way. Awesome. Thank you, Ahmed. You've been around like the whole time. Mm -hmm. Faithful viewer. <clears throat> Darren says, I always watch stuff on the YouTube channel. Later, my list is always growing because of the amazing content. And there's so much content, isn't there? That's awesome. Thank you for being here live. This is where the fun is. So we've got 15 minutes till the stream totally ends, but in about five minutes, we're gonna pause the artwork and choose a contest winner. So get those contest entries in. Um, and if you have any more questions for Sophie, ask her now, cause she's not gonna be back until tomorrow. Um, and that's just too long to have your question lingering. But you might please, forget it. yeah, you might forget, even though it's really, really important. So you can ask her about anything, her experience, um, her process, her inspiration, even the nitty gritty behind design or illustration. Go ahead and throw it at us. See what happens. Eliza says, I learned so many things. Thank you so much for Aww. doing this live. That's great. I'm so glad. That's a really. <laughs> That's a really, yeah. It's an amazing resource to have all of these awesome illustrators here today, all four. Um, and all week, too. 
I'm really thankful for it. What exactly is Sophie using right now? Photoshop? Photoshop? <laughs> Her hand on a Cintiq. But yeah, Photoshop, you're using brush tool, mm -hmm. kind of painting. Uh, one thing I like to do is um, I like to lock transparency mm. and color in that way. Um, that way I can like make one layer have more depth, depth, despite um, not having anything on top of it or like mm -hmm. anything really um, complicating it. So lock transparency. Usually all my layers are locked. That's why. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Then I try and draw, and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Everything is locked. Uh, Richie says, hats off to Adobe. It's the best software. Couldn't do any of your work without it. Wow, mm -hmm. Richie. So glad to have you here. Thanks for using it. Caitlin wants to know, when and why did you start using the lasso tool to create your shapes? Uh, it's faster. Faster than painting Agreed. a shape. And it's cleaner, too. Mm-hmm. Um, someone's wondering, how did you apply for Google? Were they open hiring and what kind of portfolio did you submit? Um, I applied for an internship. Hmm. Um, so I had a portfolio of like my student films, various character designs, um, various vis visual development work that I'd done and um, somehow worked out. Somehow. <laughs> Somehow the universe made it happen. <laughs> That's great. So you continued as an intern mm -hmm. to full time, and were you interning as a doodler or in yeah, some? Yeah, I was interning as a doodler. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you think that would be the best way for someone to enter that kind of field? Would be as an intern? Um. Well, we are doing another internship this summer, probably, mm -hmm. and we are hiring like junior doodlers. It's basically like you're doing the same job as a full time doodler, mm -hmm. except it's like a a one-year contract type of thing. Gotcha. And that's a good way to like see if you like it yeah. and try it out. Mm -hmm. so live in the Bay Area for a bit. Yeah. And is that open just to college students or anyone mm -hmm. who likes to doodle? I think it's open to graduates mm -hmm. and anyone who, you know, yeah, is interested in Yeah, it's a good fit. Internships are only open to uh, like people who are currently in school. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's very good information. Mm -hmm. Everybody write that down. Uh, so we have two more minutes to get your entries in. Come on, guys. Send us those links. We already have a lot of amazing entrants. I've been peeking at them throughout the entire stream, and I'm excited to show them to Sophie. I'm excited for you guys to all see them. They'll show up on screen, too. So we have two minutes till the contest ends. We'll pick... Sophie will pick a winner. We'll chat about what happened this stream, what's going to happen next stream, and then we're off for the day. So if you guys have any last minute things to say, please do. You can also follow Sophie on social mm -hmm. places. Yeah, I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have Behance oh, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Instagram is like where I post the most art. So if you follow me there, mm -hmm. it's um, Snow P Snow or Snow Peas Now. Pretending <laughs> no how you want now. to describe it or pronounce it. Yeah. Um, nice. That's my username. It's also on my Behance profile, I think. Mm -hmm. so. There you go. Give her a follow, and I'm sure one of the moderators will post some of those links mm -hmm. in chat. You will not be sorry. All right, we have one more minute. Come on, you guys. Send your entries. Darren, we're having a contest. So don't worry that you missed today's. We're having contests for the next two days. The themes are still a mystery right now, but if you go to be.net slash live and click on the contest tab, you can kind of figure out what the rules are and how you can enter. <clears throat> All right, you guys, almost time. Angel, nice. You got yours in right at the buzzer. So did you, Ryan? That's great. Amazing work, Sophie, says Raimi. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, it is 4.45. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Cut. There you go, and you just got the creepy creeper in the background. How much to rent for that cave? How much rent for that cave? Uh, <laughs> your soul. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> One donut, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get these opened up and we can take a peek. Ooh. Oh, I like that one. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna go back to her artwork and we'll get these all 
pulled open. Whoa. Just a couple more. All right, let's start from here. Mm. I really like this one. I love the stylization it looks of it. It a lot like Roman style. Yeah, it does. It reminds me of the doodles that you see when you use Dropbox. Oh, yeah. Totally. What do you think? Did Alice? No, she did some Slack illustrations. All right, these are the other two by Laura that she wanted us to see. So she did the purple one. And then she added these two. Awesome. Whoa, intense. Cool. Mm -hmm. And when you see one that you want to give a gold star to that we can add to the, the top runners, just let me know. Okay. How many gold stars do I get? <laughs> as many as you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one's, I love the character design of this one. Whoa. Oh, unicycle. Mm -hmm. It's creative. Outside the box. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> ah, I like that one. Gold star. <laughs> okay, gold star. We'll take this one to the top. All right. Got a basket of kittens. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Mm, Looks like they maybe. Kaleidoscope. Yeah, they might have made this with capture. Oh, we've seen this one. I really love this one. Like the stylization. Mm hmm. Cool. Looks like he's riding through a rave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's the feet again. And oh, an ostrich. I like the ostrich too. Yeah. And then we can check and see if there's any more submissions. Maybe we can pop off of this screen real quick. Awesome. Then we have a couple more. Did you have any favorites off the top of your head there? Um. Ostrich and the, um, whoa, this one's cool, octopus. Okay, we have one more to pull open. Um, I like the unicycle one, the first unicycle I remember this one. Cool. Yeah. So out of the ostrich, the octopus, and the unicycle, which one do you like the most? Can you show them all again? Yeah, so here's the octopus by McKinley. Okay. Here's the ostrich. Okay. And let's find the unicycle. Here we go. Ooh. I like this one. Unicycle? Yeah. Very cool. We have a winner. It is Gaddis. I think your name is Gaddis. Uh, Cerulus. Cool. Congratulations. Woohoo. You have won one year of subs uh, subscription of Creative Cloud. Congratulations. Amazing. And we're going to try and zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Maybe I'll click on it. Open image, new tab, potentially. There we go. Yeah. So what do you Lots like about energy. this? Yeah, the energy. Lots of energy I and cool so colors. Mm -hmm. I like the glowing, like, it's like electricity. Of the yeah, camera. this reminds me of a sculpture. Yeah. A great one. Sure. Awesome. Good job, Gaddis. Thank you for hanging out, you guys. And thank you, Sophie, for your thank awesome you. illustration. So what are you going to be working on tomorrow since we've seen this so far? Um, I'll probably continue uh, continue filling in the um, cave walls and filling in the like rocks in the front. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably not do as much of a detailed run through as I was mm -hmm. doing today, just so I'll save the details for the last day. Ah, yeah, gotcha. But getting everything blocked in for tomorrow, I think, will be my goal. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So you guys come back same time, same place tomorrow. Also, we're just going to be live from 9 to 5 tomorrow and the next day, Thursday. Um, so come and hang out with us. Ask more questions. Enter the contest if you didn't win. And you can even win the three posters as a giveaway. So awesome. Thank you, Sophie. Don't forget to follow her on social. It's S Snow Pea? Snow Pea Snow. Snow Pea Snow. <laughs> snow Pea Snow on Instagram. Is it the same thing on Twitter? Uh, no, it's, it's my full name on Twitter, oh, Sophie Dow. There you go. Someone else on Instagram is Sophie Dow, but mm. don't follow that person. Follow no, <laughs> if it's not her, you need to go Snoopy Snow. <laughs> awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. We really appreciate it, and we will be back uh, tomorrow. Any last words? Um, someone said, don't forget the cactus, so I'm going to make oh. a note here. So there I you don't go. It. Um, cactus. 
There okay. you go. Now you're being held to your word. Yeah. Yay, so many people are saying goodbye. And Sophie did such a good job for her first live stream. And she'll only get better for the next two. Thank you everyone for yeah. watching. Yeah.